Hi, I'm Dr. Jason Fung. Welcome to the Diabetes Code Clinic, part two. If you didn't get a chance, you can review part one, where we talk about type two diabetes, what it is, how it develops, and how to reverse it. We're focused here on remission of type two diabetes, that is putting it into reverse. And in this section, we're gonna talk about low carbohydrate diets. Remember that type two diabetes is essentially an overflow problem. Your body has too much sugar, can't handle it, and the sugar is spilling out into the blood. Imagine, if you will, a rain barrel. The water is like the glucose, your body is like the barrel. The barrel can hold a certain amount of the glucose, but if you get too much, it's gonna spill out over the top. And when it spills out over the top, that's when you have problems. So where is this glucose coming from? Well, it's coming from your diet. And that's why it's so important to focus on the cause of the problem, which is your diet. And low carbohydrate diets can be very effective for a very simple reason. Carbohydrates are sugar and your body has too much of it already. All foods are composed of three macronutrients that is proteins, fats, and carbohydrates. Proteins, such as you might see with meat, uh, fish, uh, nuts, lentils, for example, contain amino acids. And there are certain amount of essential amino acids, meaning that our body can't make them. So if you eat a zero protein diet, eventually you're going to get sick. These amino acids are not glucose, and they don't raise your blood glucose. Second macronutrient is fat, and these are composed of fatty acids. So foods such as avocados, full fat dairy, some of the fatty cuts of meat are gonna have a lot of fat. And there are some essential fatty acids, such as you may have heard of the omega-3s. And this means that our body can't produce those fats, so if we eat a zero fat diet, eventually we're going to get sick as well. And the third macronutrient is carbohydrates. So these are the starches and the sugars. Carbohydrates are things like bread, rice, potatoes, um, and that kind of thing. And what you have to understand is that there are no essential carbohydrates. Carbohydrates, what are they? Well, they're glucose. That's their chemical structure. If you look at a starch such as flour, it's composed of a long chain of glucose. And it's in two different patterns, one called amylopectin and one called amylose. But the point is that when your body breaks them down into their component parts, you're absorbing glucose. And when you absorb that glucose, your blood glucose is going to go up as opposed to amino acids from protein and fatty acids from fats. You don't need carbohydrates. Carbohydrates certainly pro provide energy, that is calories, but it provides no essential nutrients. And this is where people get confused because they may say, well, vegetables and fruits, they have a lot of uh, micronutrients, things like fiber, like vitamins, like minerals. Yes, but the, the carbohydrate itself contains none of that. Certain carbohydrate containing foods may have that, but the carbohydrate, the starch itself, doesn't have any essential vitamins or nutrients. And you can get that from other foods. So you don't need to eat carbs to be healthy. And we've known this for many, many years. If you give somebody glucose, then their blood glucose is gonna go up. This was shown in 1984. If you give somebody 50 grams of glucose, their blood glucose immediately goes up. When you eat rapidly digested starches, such as flour, which has been uh, very processed very fine. It's a very pure carbohydrate. Well, it's like eating 50 grams of pure glucose and your blood glucose will go up. When you eat proteins, your blood glucose doesn't go anywhere. And it's really very simple. If you eat glucose, your blood glucose goes up. If you eat amino acids or fatty acids, your blood glucose is not gonna go up because you didn't eat any glucose. So low carbohydrate diets for type two diabetes makes a lot of sense because if your body has too much glucose, well, you want to be eating less glucose. 
Remember, this is a key point. Some foods are going to raise your blood sugars and some foods do not raise your blood sugars. So if your blood sugars are high, such as with type 2 diabetes, you want to eat more foods that don't raise your blood sugars and those tend to be higher in protein and fats because you're going to still get the calories that you need from the proteins and the fats, but you're not going to get the sugar as if you would if you took those calories as carbohydrates. So you can simply shift to eating more proteins and more fats. You got to look for the sugar in your diet and eliminate it if you want your blood sugars to get better. And using this very simple approach, Dr. David Unwin in the United Kingdom showed that providing this advice, you could put type 2 diabetes into remission 46% of the time. That is get people off of all their medications and lower their sugars to the point that they would be considered not diabetic in almost half of his patients. If they didn't have diabetes and only had prediabetes, he could normalize it in 93% of the cases. That's astounding, an amazing power of the diet on this dietary disease. So when you want to get started on a low carbohydrate diet, what do you eat and what do you not eat? Well, here's a very simple guide. The foods that you eat, green and non-starchy vegetables, you can really eat as much as you like. Things like broccoli, like asparagus, cauliflower, artichokes, any of those vegetables that are grown above ground. The, the, the rooty vegetables, like the starchy vegetables, such as potatoes and so on, tend to have much more of those carbohydrates and they can raise your blood glucose. But the ones that are not so starchy, yet go ahead. Proteins, that's meats like beef and pork and lamb, shellfish, eggs, those are fine because proteins don't raise your blood glucose. Processed meats where they can put a lot of sugar and other additives, you should probably still try to avoid bologna and sausages. You may have to be a little careful because you don't know what else they've put in it. But if you're eating fresh fish or shellfish, for example, don't worry. And also natural fats. So fats that appear as they would in nature, things like butter, such as olive oil, coconut oil, uh, avocados, those no problem because again, those foods are not going to raise your blood glucose. So what do you want to avoid? Well, these things tend to raise blood glucose. So added sugars, anything where they say they've put sugar in, cut it out. Sugary drinks, sodas, iced teas, fruit juices, cocktails, uh, coffee drinks, you should cut that out altogether because you know they're sweet, you know they've added sugar, and therefore it's going to raise your blood sugar. Starchy carbohydrates, eat as little as possible. So the, the white carbs like white bread and white potatoes and white rice, they're highly refined. And the point of being highly refined is that your body will absorb it very quickly and break it down almost instantly into glucose so your blood glucose goes way up. If they're unrefined, it takes a little bit longer to digest and absorb and therefore it doesn't cause as much of a spike. But either case, you should try to limit the starchy foods as much as possible because in the end, it is still glucose and your body has too much glucose already. Fat-free foods. This is something that was very popular a little while ago when people were trying to avoid uh, uh, fats because they thought a low-fat diet would help them. They would replace the fat with sugar to make up for the taste and that's why you should avoid these fat-free foods or low-fat foods. They tend to be very processed and very high in sugars and both are very bad. Snacks. You should avoid the snacks because once again, they tend to be highly processed carbohydrates because if you do that, they're shelf stable. So biscuits and cookies and crackers and all those things, people don't want to cook when they're having a snack. So therefore, refined carbohydrates can stay at room temperature almost indefinitely and therefore they tend to be very bad because it's just a concentrated form of glucose and you don't really need it. You can eat more at your meal. And fruits. Fruits are not the worst thing you can do, but you have to understand that they still contain fructose because they're sweet. So try to minimize them if you can. 
berries, apples, and pears are a good choice. Sweeter fruits such as bananas and mangoes and grapes. Some people do get a lot of problems because they can raise the blood glucose very high. There's also this graphic here which shows you if you were to translate a food into teaspoons of sugar, how much would it be? Well, a bowl of rice, for example, would be translated, if it was glucose, pure glucose, to 10.1 teaspoons of sugar. That's a lot of sugar that you're pouring into your body that has too much sugar already. And most people won't be able to handle it. But no, potato, 9.1 teaspoons of sugar. That's a lot. What if you're to switch it instead for broccoli or eggs at the bottom of this graph here? Well, broccoli only translates into 0 0.2 teaspoons of sugar. And the eggs is 0 teaspoons of sugar. So while the rice and the eggs and broccoli might be the same calories, is very different in terms of the amount of sugar that you're putting in your body. Remember that if you're looking for type 2 diabetes remission, you got to understand that carbs are sugar. That's their chemical structure. They are glucose. You cannot change that no matter what you do. Your body has too much glucose and is spilling glucose into the blood. It's like if you went to the gas station and you filled up your, your car with gasoline, now the tank is full, but you keep pumping gas in, pumping gas in, and now it's just spilling everywhere. You're getting all this uh, gas all over your, your clothes, everywhere. Well, what would you do? Well, stop filling up the tank. That's the most obvious and correct thing to do. In this case, your body has too much glucose. So stop putting more glucose in. Look at your diet and make those changes that you need to put your diabetes into remission.